Thank you for visiting our website today. I'm Dr. Cooper from Englert Dermatology. As a dermatologist, I specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of skin, hair, and nail conditions. Today, I'm here to talk to you about skin cancer detection and prevention. There are two different kinds of ultraviolet or UV radiation that comes from the sun. You probably have heard of UVA and UVB rays. Both are dangerous, cause premature wrinkles, and increase your chance of developing skin cancer. These rays are always present, even when it's cloudy. UVA rays, which pass through window glass, penetrate deeper into the dermis, the thickest layer of the skin. UVA rays can cause suppression of the immune system, which interferes with the immune system's ability to protect you against the development and spread of skin cancer. UVA exposure is also known to lead to signs of premature aging of the skin, such as wrinkling and age spots. UVB rays are the sun's burning rays, which are blocked by window glass and are the primary cause of sunburn. A good way to remember it is that UVA rays are the aging rays and UVB rays are the burning rays. Excessive exposure to the forms of UV rays can lead to the development of skin cancer. So what exactly are UV rays doing to your skin? Some of the damage caused by UV rays are permanent destruction of the skin's supporting structure, the collagen and elastic fibers, freckling, wrinkling, dilated blood vessels, suspicious skin lesions, redness, drug reactions, and of course, skin cancer. So, is there a safe way to tan? What you need to know is that there is no safe way to tan. A tan is the skin's response to injury caused by UV exposure. To protect your skin from UV damage, your body makes melanin every day. Melanin is the pigment that gives color to your skin and eyes. When your skin gets damaged by the sun's rays, it makes more melanin to try to protect your skin from further damage. That causes the skin to change color darken or burn. Overexposure to ultraviolet light, both natural and artificial, results in changes to the skin's texture, causing wrinkling and age spots. Thus, tanning to improve your appearance is ultimately self-defeating. Every time you tan, you damage your skin, and this damage accumulates over time. This accumulated damage, in addition to accelerating the aging process, also increases your risk for skin cancer. These photos were taken with a UV camera. The photos on the right show UV light damage beneath the skin that is not yet visible to the naked eye. The dark spots in these photos indicate the amount of damage a person has had on their face. Research has shown that UV light from the sun in indoor tanning beds causes wrinkles, age spots, and can lead to the development of skin cancer. How many of you are not surprised by the amount of UV damage on the top photo? which clearly shows a lifetime of excessive UV exposure. How many of you are surprised by the amount of damage seen in the young girl's photo at the bottom? She is only 17. Current estimates are that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime. Substantially more than one million cases of skin cancer are diagnosed in the United States each year. There are three different types of skin cancer. The most common types are basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. The most deadly form of skin cancer is melanoma. Early detection and treatment are very important with all three types. Let's take a look at each type of skin cancer now. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common form of cancer worldwide. Basal cell carcinoma most often appears on sun-exposed areas of the face, scalp, ears, chest, back, and legs. These tumors can have several different forms. The most common appearance of a basal cell carcinoma is that of a small, dome-shaped bump that has a pearly white color. Another common sign is a sore that bleeds and heals, only to recur again. If you already have had one basal cell carcinoma, studies have shown that you are at 40% risk of getting a second basal cell carcinoma within five years. Individuals who have had multiple basal cell carcinomas or other skin cancers, such as squamous cell, are at also increased risk for melanoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common skin cancer. 
More than 250,000 new squamous cell carcinomas are diagnosed every year in the United States. Squamous cell carcinomas usually appear as crusted or scaly patches on the skin with a red inflamed base, a growing tumor, or a non-healing ulcer. They are generally found on sun-exposed areas like the face, neck, arms, scalp, backs of hands, and ears. The cancer can also occur on the lips, inside the mouth, on the genitalia, or anywhere on the body. If left untreated, squamous cell carcinoma can destroy much of the tissue surrounding the tumor that may result in loss of a nose or ear, for example. Aggressive types of squamous cell carcinomas, especially those on lips and ears, can spread to lymph nodes. However, both basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas are easily treated if detected early. Melanoma, the most serious form of skin cancer, is characterized by the uncontrolled growth of pigment-producing cells. Melanomas might appear on the skin suddenly without warning, but they also can develop in an existing mole. They most frequently appear on the upper back, torso, lower legs, head, and neck. It is estimated that there will be more than 120,000 new cases of melanoma each year. More than 75% of all skin cancer deaths are from melanoma. One American dies of melanoma almost every hour, every 61 minutes. This may surprise you, but melanoma is not just being diagnosed in older individuals any longer. In fact, it is the most common form of cancer for young adults 25 to 29 years old, and the second most common form of cancer for adolescents and young adults aged 15 to 29 years old. If detected and treated before it reaches the lymph nodes, melanoma has a 99% five-year survival rate. Who gets melanoma? Melanoma can strike anyone. Caucasians are more likely to be diagnosed with melanoma than other races. However, even among Caucasians, certain individuals are at higher risk than others. For example, you have a substantially increased risk of developing melanoma if you have greater than 50 moles, large moles, or atypical or unusual appearing moles. Your risk is increased if a blood relative, your parents, children, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, has had melanoma. If you are Caucasian with fair skin, your risk is higher than a Caucasian with olive skin. Redheads and blondes have a higher risk of developing melanoma. Blue or green eyes also increase your risk of developing melanoma. Your chances increase significantly if you've already had a melanoma, but also increase if you've had a basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma. Your risk for melanoma also may be increased if you've had other cancers, such as breast or thyroid cancer. Recognition of changes in the skin is the best way to detect early melanoma. Use the ABCDEs of melanoma detection, and if you have a changing mole, a new mole, or a mole that is different, make an appointment to see a dermatologist as soon as possible. Here is what the ABCDEs stand for. A stands for asymmetry. One half does not match the other. B stands for border irregularity. The edges are ragged, notched, or blurred. C stands for color. The pigmentation is not uniform. Different shades of tan, brown, or black are often present. Dashes of red, white, and blue can add to the mottled appearance. D stands for diameter. While melanomas are usually greater than 6 mm in diameter when diagnosed, about the size of a pencil eraser, they can be smaller. E stands for evolving, a molar skin lesion that looks different from the rest or is changing in size, shape, or color. The American Academy of Dermatology urges everyone to examine their skin regularly. This means looking over your entire body, including your back, your scalp, the soles of your feet, between your toes, and the palms of your hands. If you notice a mole different from others or which changes, itches, or bleeds, even if it is smaller than 6 millimeters, you should make an appointment to see a dermatologist as soon as possible. The best way to detect skin cancer early, when it is most treatable, is to perform a skin self-exam on a regular basis. 
Now, new research shows that involving a partner in a skin self-examination makes it more likely that self-screening will be performed and can improve the early detection of skin cancer, which could lead to a better prognosis. So how do you conduct a skin self-examination? A skin self-examination is quick and easy, and as I mentioned, a partner examination increases the chances that a suspicious spot will be found early. For anywhere that you can't see easily, such as your back or your scalp, use a hand mirror or ask a partner to take a look. Examine your body front and back in the mirror, then look at the right and left sides with your arms raised. Bend your elbows and look carefully at forearms, upper underarms, and palms. Look at the backs of your legs, the spaces between your toes, and on the soles of your feet. For the back of your neck and scalp, examine the skin with a hand mirror or have your partner examine those areas. Part your hair for a closer look. Finally, with a hand mirror or partner, check your back and buttocks. Sun exposure is the most preventable risk factor for all skin cancers, including melanoma. You can have fun in the sun and decrease your risk of skin cancer. Here's how to be sun smart. Generously apply water-resistant sunscreen with a sun protection factor of at least 30 that provides broad-spectrum protection from both UVA and UVB rays to all exposed skin. Sunscreen should be applied every day to exposed skin, not just if you're going to be in the sun. Sunscreen should be applied to dry skin 15 to 30 minutes before going outdoors. When using sunscreen, be sure to apply it to all exposed areas and pay particular attention to the face, ears, hands, and arms. Coat the skin liberally and rub it in thoroughly. Most people apply only 25 to 50% of the recommended amount of sunscreen. One ounce, enough to fill a shot glass, is considered the amount needed to cover exposed areas of the body properly. Don't forget that lips get sunburned too, so apply a lip balm that contains sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher. Sunscreen should be reapplied approximately every two hours or after swimming or perspiring heavily. Even so-called water-resistant sunscreens may lose their effectiveness after 40 minutes in the water. Sunscreens rub off as well as wash off, so if you've towel dried, reapply sunscreen for continued protection. Also, while there are a number of combination cosmetic products, such as moisturizers that contain sunscreen, it is important to remember that these products also need to be reapplied to achieve continued UV protection. Wear protective clothing, such as long sleeve shirt, pants, and wide-brimmed hat and sunglasses where possible. A wide-brimmed hat is a good way to create shade on your face and neck. Wearing sunglasses can help avoid skin cancers that occur in the eye, which account for 10% of all melanomas. Seek shade when appropriate, remembering that the sun's rays are strongest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. If your shadow is shorter than you are, seek shade. Protect children from sun exposure by playing in the shade, using protective clothing, and applying sunscreen. Use extra caution near water, snow, and sand as they reflect the damaging rays of the sun which can increase your chance of sunburn. Get vitamin D safely through a healthy diet that may include vitamin supplements. Don't seek the sun. Avoid tanning beds. Ultraviolet light from the sun in tanning beds can cause skin cancer and wrinkling. Despite what you may have heard, indoor tanning is not a safer way to tan. In spite of claims that tanning beds offer safe or controlled tanning, indoor tanning equipment, which includes all artificial light sources such as beds, lamps, bulbs, booths, etc., emits UVA and UVB radiation. The amount of the radiation produced during indoor tanning is similar to the sun and in some cases may be stronger. Many tanning salons are unregulated, allowing customers, especially those with fair skin, access to tanning beds without supervision or eye protection. If you want to look like you've been in the sun, consider using a sunless self-tanning product, but continue to use sunscreen with it. Check your birthday suit on your birthday. If you notice anything changing, growing, or bleeding on your skin, make an appointment to see a dermatologist. 